Hello, my friends. Today we're going to be talking about what aperture is in digital photography. So uh, let's first start off with what is the difference between aperture and f-stop? Um, a lot of people get this confused, so we're going to really make, make an effort to clarify that right now. So aperture in photography refers to the maximum opening um, of the, 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 the width of your lens. So in here, there's something called the diaphragm. I don't have a manual focus lens, so I can't actually show you as a demonstration how it actually changes. Um, this is only done through software by changing a setting in my camera that functions to change that electronically. Um, but what you're changing when you, when, or what, you're, what we refer to when we say aperture is the maximum opening of the diaphragm or, um, or the diameter of the lens, the lens opening. Um, and then f-stop on the other hand is a setting within the, the overall range of your lens. So for example right here, so I have a, the 50mm 1.4 DG Sigma art lens. Um, the aperture for this lens is 1.4. That is the maximum aperture of this lens. Now if I set the, the, the lens like, through my camera um, to f4 as an f-stop, that's a specific setting in the range of this lens. This, range, this, the, this lens goes from uh, f1.4 to f22 um, and that right there is an f-stop. So the reason why it's called an f-stop, it's really just an, like ep aperture has just been notated as an f, uh, an italicized f. I don't know the whole background behind why it's f. Um, maybe it's a Greek symbol, I'm not entirely sure. But when it's set, when we're referring to f-stop, we're re referring to a specific setting, an f or an aperture stop um, in, in the range of a camera, uh, specifically the range of a lens. So. Um, a lot of beginning photographers really make that mistake of really not understanding what aperture versus f-stop is. Um, f-stop again is really just talking about the specific setting of an aperture in a lens. Um, so when you, when you uh, I guess the biggest thing I could really say on that to really make that super, super clear, think aperture maximum, think f-stop setting. Um, just to kind of clarify that, I hope that helps on that one. Um, so what happens when you make a change to aperture and, and you actually make a change and you're adjusting the f-stop of, of your aperture, whether it be like through a ring, that would be manually on, on a manual focus and a manual lens or electronically through just the camera itself. Um, what you're actually changing and what you're selecting as a photographer is going to be what's the size of the, dia the diaphragm or the diameter of the opening of the lens. And we get to choose that. Um, so the, the sizes that we can pick are going to range typically from 0 .09 or 0.9, sometimes 0.65, all the way to f32, f36, f40. Um, a lot of lenses do not go that far. A lot of lenses do also do not go that wide open either. Um, most, most lenses typically that you'll see out right now will be between f1.4, maybe 1.2, to f22, f32, that's very typical. But there are lenses that exist that go further or uh, uh, more wide open or, or more narrow um, in aperture. Uh, those lenses are gonna be very expensive, but they do exist. So um, when you have a smaller or in more narrow opening as far as the size, the aperture, um, what, that, what that means is that um, the, the opening is gonna be smaller, so there's gonna be a greater depth of field, meaning the distance between where your subject is um, and the front um, most uh, point of focus and the back most point of focus are, are gonna be, it's gonna be larger. Um, so that basically means that you're gonna be able to have more of your photo in focus if the narrow, if there, there's more of a narrow or smaller um, aperture which in this case, a narrow aperture is gonna to refer to a higher f-stop number. It's just an inverse relationship. Um, so as the number gets larger because it's fractional and it's referring to the size of the opening, as the, the, the fractional value, so f, let's just say f as a, a uh, symbol over like 100, that's gonna be a smaller opening than f over one, uh, which is gonna be a larger opening. Um, for some ter terminologies to kind of help you guys get started as well, uh, when I say opening up or stopping down a lens, it's referring to how wide or narrow the opening of aperture actually is. So when someone says, hey, open up your lens to f1.4, for example, or f1.8, what they're saying is adjust your aperture, your f-stop setting so that it's the smallest number. So for example, 1.8, so that the diameter of your, of your lens is actually larger or it's the largest. 
Um, in that case, that could be the maximum aperture, 1.4 for this lens, um, or it could be 1.8 for your lens. And if they say, hey, stop down your lens a little bit, you're letting a little bit too much light in, they're referring to you to actually um, closing down the aperture, uh, which means that they're, they're asking you to increase the f-stop number to say f4, 5.6, or f8, or f11, f16, f22. Um, that's what that's referring to. That's a little bit of nomenclature that you'll see all the time, and that's referring to opening up or closing down. So opening is big, closing down is, is small. Uh, what happens when you have a more open or um, a wide open lens and you're, you're a little bit further down when it comes to f-stops and you're at a smaller number? Uh, that means you're going to have more shallow depth of field. Uh, more shallow depth of field means the distance between the, the front focus and the back focus from where you're actually focusing, whether you're doing automatic focus or you're doing manual focus, that's going to be very, very small. In some cases, if you're shooting at 1.4 like this lens is able to do, um, and you're shooting in a situation where you're, you're very close to your subject, only the eyes in a lot of cases will actually be in focus. If you start to step back, maybe it'll be maybe the eyes and, and the nose and maybe a little bit of the lips. If you, if you move back a little bit further, it may be all the way to the ears at f1.4. F, F, F but that distance is very, very small. Um, and then as you, you increase the f-stop and you actually close down your aperture so it gets smaller and smaller, that, that distance increases and increases and increases. And that's, a sequen sequen uh, that's very sequential in nature um, as far as every time you change a setting and you increase that value, it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. Um, that's just how it works. So, um, so what happens as really as the narrow, as aperture narrows? So that means less light is gonna to get to your sensor because you have to think about light as, as water. Um, so if you have a very big or wide um, tunnel, or, or in this case, a pipe, and water's running through, um, that means if, it, the, if the, uh, the, the opening is really wide, a lot of water can get to your sensor in this case. But if, that, if you have, that, have the same amount of water and the pipe gets smaller, with the same amount of water, not as, not as much water is ultimately gonna hit your sensor. And as far as uh, photography is concerned, that means not as much light is actually gonna enter through the lens and actually hit the sensor. So if you use a more closed down um, or narrow aperture, you're gonna need more light to actually get a properly exposed photo. Um, we will do a future video explaining on what you can actually do in post-processing to increase exposure and how much you can kind of pull and play if you're shooting in RAW, um, in RAW as opposed to shooting with JPEG. But um, long story short, you're gonna need more light. So if you're in a situation where there's too much light and you, you need to, um, you need to bring your exposure down, then at that point you'll have to narrow down your aperture. Um, uh, let me also talk about, just, just so you guys know as well, really the main difference between smaller and wider apertures. The biggest thing is gonna be depth of field. The depth of field at smaller apertures is going to be greater. Um, while if you have a larger aperture, the depth of field is going to be more shallow, but it's in terms of light and the amount of light they're going to need, if the, if the larger, if you have a larger aperture, you won't need as much light. If you have a closed or narrow aperture, you'll need more light. Um, and that kind of allows you to, uh, kind of ebb and flow as far as how much depth of field you want, but there's, there's going to be more changes to that. Um, as far as what are the best apertures for situations that you're gonna commonly find yourself in, if you're shooting outside and you, you want a lot of uh, background blur, set your aperture to the lowest or the maximum that you can for your lens, if that's f1.8, f1.8 will be the best one. Um, if you're indoors, it's really low light and you're just trying to get a properly exposed photo, uh, set your aperture again to 1.8 so you can let in as much light. You'll also get a little bit more shallow depth of field. Um, if you're shooting landscapes and you want everything from the point of focus um, to the foreground, the midground, and background to be in focus, at that point set your aperture to the greatest value that you can. For this lens right here, that's going to be f22. Um, for your lens, it may be f18. It could be a little bit different. Um, if you want the sharpest photos possible, what you have to do. Every single lens that's manufactured has a kind of a bell curve as far as sharpness, and every single lens that's been manufactured also has a, a usually a one or two stop um, aperture where the lens is gonna be the sharpness. For this lens right here, typically f8, 5.6 will be the sharpest. For your lens, it's gonna be in the middle of the range will be the sharpest aperture if you want the sharpest photos. 
Um, granted, that's going to kind of change your depth of field. Your depth of field is going to be kind of middle of the road, so you're going to have some, 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 um, a, a little bit of give in, in terms of in front of this, uh, the subject being in focus. You'll have a little bit of give on the background being a little bit in focus. So that's something creatively you kind of have to make a make kind of a, um, a distinction between. You might have to make a little bit of a compromise, but um, if you want the sharpest photos, that will give you the sharpest photos. Um, we can go. We can go on and on with examples. Uh, I'll give you guys in a future video more specific examples and give you more situations so that you know. Um, but for the purposes right now, we'll just give you those four so you at least have an idea what some of the best settings are depending on what you want. But the thing you always have to ask yourself when it comes to uh, considerations with changing aperture is, um, okay, what kind of environment am I in? Uh, what's the light like? Do I have a lot of light? Do I not have a lot of light? Um, what kind of subject matter am I shooting? Am I moving? Am I shooting uh, a subject that's moving, whether that be a car, a person, um, or just an object? Um, how fast is that person moving? Um, and how much depth of field do I want? Is it important that I have everything in the photo be in focus? Um, these are kind of the considerations you have to ask when you're when you're starting to kind of dive into the ebbs and flows and the changes that are going to be needed when you're when you're starting to make settings and, and changes in aperture. Um, because every single setting that you change, as far as uh, changing like the opening or, or narrowing down, it will impact the photo. It won't necessarily always change sharpness. It, sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't. Um, but it will change exposure every single time that you do that. Um, and the more narrow that, that opening is, yes, you'll get greater depth of field, but at the same time, you'll need a lot more light, um, which is gonna also change the way the photo looks and how, and how much light that you're gonna need to get a properly exposed photo. Um, so, you know, kind of in closing, uh, the biggest things when it comes to aperture is, is that you have to really make considerations on, okay, what do I need to be in focus? Um, where is my lens the sharpest? Uh, what's kind of the what's kind of the creative effect that I'm going for? What's actually really important, and what's my subject matter? Um, how much light do I have? Um, as long as you know those kind of um, those those settings right there and those values, you'll be totally fine when it comes to to uh, setting aperture to get the, the results that you really want. Um, that right there kind of wraps up today's video. Um, we have a lot of other great content coming out to really help you guys. Make sure, making sure that you understand the fundamentals so you don't just get beaten down when you're out there and you're just, you're looking at the back of your camera and you're just like, man, why is it so bright? Like, oh my God, I can't get anything in focus. Cause that was me for a really long time actually. Cause I didn't understand aperture. Um, among a lot of other settings that we're gonna cover in future videos, but um, you guys know what to do, man. If um, This is this is kind of gonna wrap up just, just how we're talking about just this topic right here. But we got a lot of other great content to come. Um, definitely, if you want more details and, and more information on some of the other other the other issues that beginning photographers struggle with, I know I did. Uh, right here, you know what to do. Um, definitely check out the website. Check out some of the more in detail blogs that we have. Um, the subscribe button is right below, right here. Um, you know, hit that subscribe button and then just you know while you're down there, just kind of mouse over a little bit and just hit that like button too. Um, and you're welcome to leave comments. We read absolutely every single comment. We read every single email that you guys send us. Um, we're excited to get feedback. Uh, we're excited to also know what kind of topics you guys would like us to cover. Um, until next time, guys, peace out.